miles. The whole house is cold and drafty and damp. You couldn't sit down in the dining room or the kitchen and have a meal without being cold. You couldn't put your feet on the ground without having shoes on. The temperature in the house became a real concern. I have thermal pyjamas, I have thermal socks, and I have a rug that I put over me. That's how cold it is. Joanna raised concerns over the lack of heat with Bovis, but claims she was getting nowhere. I started to get a bit worried because I can't go through another winter being freezing cold. So I decided I would spend my own money getting a thermal imaging report. Joanna turned to Paul Buckingham, an energy efficiency consultant, to identify what could be causing the problem. The kitchen here, this is the, the first room that I came into when I did the survey. And the first image I took, the floor is a very, very blue colour. Paul's test discovered a large area of cold spots on the kitchen floor and drafts behind many of the walls. The temperature in here, I think, was around about 19, 20 degrees. So we've got a temperature difference of about um, seven, eight degrees, which you wouldn't expect to see between a floor and a ceiling if you had a well insulated floor. Paul believes there's only one reason the kitchen floor is showing this reading is pointing to the fact there's no insulation in this floor. You wouldn't expect to see a floor as cold as that. It does need to be confirmed with invasive investigations, but I'm fairly confident that there's no insulation in this floor. If true, the property could be in breach of building regulations and its energy rating report would be grossly inaccurate. Although stunned by Paul's findings, it came as a slight relief to Joanna. It's kind of like someone saying to you, yes, you're right. Someone's put a rubber stamp on it and gone, you're not mad, it's OK. Joanna has sent the report to Bovis and the NHBC. So, how have they responded? I've never had a word from them, not even an acknowledgement, not anything to allay my fears, not anything. But the most shocking thing Paul found was located behind the boxed waste pipe in the kitchen. It appeared to be unsealed, allowing heat to continuously escape from the room. Because there's no seal there, it's just drawing air in behind that, that dry lining. It's just pulling it through the whole building. And this is a massive source of heat loss. Uh, and not only that, potentially a fire risk. So not only is there a lack of insulation, there could be an even more serious problem. Building regulations state that in houses this size, all doors are fitted with a fire seal. This strip expands if there is smoke or excessive heat, preventing a fire feeding on oxygen. Because there is so much air flowing behind the walls, it could make a fire travel much faster, with devastating consequences. Paul and his colleague Ian put the building to the test. We, we've isolated the kitchen from the, from the rest of the house. And by depressurising, effectively what we're hoping to do is draw smoke from the kitchen through the rest of the house, through any air leakage, which will give you an idea of if there was a fire in the kitchen, how that fire could potentially spread through the building once it gets into the air void and starts following the air paths. Smoke is being pumped into the kitchen, mimicking an actual fire. There are no building regulations about sealing boxing for pipes, but it is listed as an NHBC standard, so should have been checked. If the area is adequately sealed, the smoke will remain trapped and confined in the kitchen. But that's not the case here. Oh, my God! Look at it! It's coming out of my skirting board all the way along. Look at it. The smoke has quickly spread to other rooms throughout the three-storey house. If this was a fire, it could have potentially spread across two of the three floors in a very short time. Um, where we've, we've put smoke into the kitchen, it's flowed through the, behind the, the, the dry line of the plaster. It's got just coming out wherever it can find a path out. And in here, we've got quite a draft from the, the toilet flush mechanism there. There's a big gap under that skirting board. Um, you can feel the air flowing out of that. And again, if there's a fire, it'll pull air in from all of these areas, pull it around, feed that fire, so you're not going to be able to contain it. It's everywhere, absolutely everywhere. In a kitchen believed to have poor insulation, the air escaping through the pipe boxing will only add to further heat loss problems. So for Joanna, the test has been yet another eye-opener.
The more reports I commission and the more things I have done, the more frightened I become of this house. Bovis said that all of their homes are covered by a two-year warranty and that health and safety of their customers is an absolute priority in the way their homes are built. In rare circumstances such as this, they pass on rectification work to the NHBC. They said that Joanna knows the NHBC will carry out all works required and inform both Joanna and Bovis when the work is completed. The NHBC told us they recently met Joanna and have taken steps to ensure the remaining works can be completed as swiftly and effectively as possible. But despite this, Joanna and Joe are not happy about the way the house was built. I say to Bovis, why don't you build a house that's fit to live in? It's like anything else in life. You sell rotten eggs, people are going to stop buying those eggs. You sell rotten houses, people are going to stop buying your houses. My nightmare that don't stop. And my nightmare's no different now to the first day I moved this house. 